السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. In today's lecture, we will uh, complete our talk on uh, ECG. Uh, so we will talk in details about the uh, ECG leads. So electrocardiographic leads are bipolar limb leads, which are three, and there are unipolar limb leads, and there are uh, which are also three, and we have chest leads, uh, which can also be called precardial leads. So as you can see, the bipolar limb leads are one, two, and three. Unipolar limb leads are also three, and they are called augmented VR, augmented VL, and augmented VF. And then we have chest leads, which are six from V1 through V6. So this is what actually we can obtain when we uh, perform an ECG to uh, a patient. Uh, you will have different ECG patterns from these different leads that we already mentioned. And we will talk in details about how uh, an ECG is recorded from all of these leads and what is the meaning of the deflections. First of all, limb leads are actually six limb leads. There are three bipolar and three unipolar. So um, having leads for the ECG is like trying to look at the heart from different planes. So this is the best um, description of the uh, ECG different leads. So um, some of the leads look at the heart uh, from frontal plane, uh, uh, like a vertical plane that uh, divides the human being and the heart into anterior and posterior section. So we look uh, uh, in, in the frontal or vertical view of the heart. And we know that uh, when depolarization happens or take place in the heart, there will be an electrical vector. Okay, And we said that there are a mean uh, cardiac uh, vector for the heart. So when this is generated, it has an electrical current that will spread uh, from the heart into all over the body. And that actually can be picked up by the leads. Okay, so the leads are like eyes or cameras uh, that tries to look or to have a look at the electrical activity of the heart. So when these uh, electrical potentials or activities are picked up, from the surface of the body, then uh, this actually will be recorded by the ECG machine and will be read by the physician in order to obtain information about the uh, uh, health of the heart and the electrical activity of the heart. So let's start with the bipolar limb leads. They are three leads. Uh, which are divided into lead 1, lead 2, and lead 3. Um, when we say bipolar, that means they should have two poles. Every lead should have two poles. One of them is a positive, and the other is a negative pole. Okay. And when we look at the heart from a lead, okay, so we look at it from different angles, and that's why we have different leads. So that we can look at the heart from different angles, and then we can um, know or have information about each uh, part of the heart. Okay, we can read the electrical activities from each part of the heart. So. As we said, for each lead, we should have 
um, two electrodes or two poles. One is positive and one is negative. Okay, so these electrodes actually will measure the difference of potentials. Okay, فرق uh, الجهد from these two electrodes, and that will uh, make the needle of the voltmeter to fluctuate. And then this will be actually uh, recorded uh, in the or by the EC, um, ECG machine in order to give us the waves that we talked about previously, the QRS complex mainly. Okay, so this will be re recorded on actually a, a paper or a piece of paper and then we will see different patterns. So we will look at these patterns actually for each lead and try to explain uh, why does this uh, uh, particular pattern appears for uh, each particular lead. Before we start talking in details about, about the different leads, uh, we, we have to uh, know these uh, general information about the electrical axis, about the uh, cardiac vector, and uh, how an ECG could be uh, generated. So, what does electrical axis of the lead mean? Ish who will electrical axis of the lead? Mahwar al lead. Okay, it's actually an imaginary line which have which is drawn from the negative electrode toward the positive electrode. Okay, so as it is drawn, okay, uh, uh, between two electrodes that we placed, so it can be changed if we change the positions of the electrode. إذا إحنا اللي نضع الالكترودز على الجسم والأكسس هو ما بين البوزيتيف والنيجاتيف الكترودز، أوكي هو الخط الوهمي بين هدول السالب والموجب. So if we change the electrodes position, the axis will be changed. Okay. Now the positive electrode إذا الالكترود الموجب is called exploring electrode. Okay, which means if you want to look at the heart, you look from an angle that is from the positive electrode or positive pole. Okay, so you can consider the positive electrode, okay, as a camera or lens that you look through this camera, okay, into the heart. So, uh, exploring electrode is equals the eye of the lead or the camera lens of the lead, okay, by which we take a picture of the electric of electricity of the heart from that same angle, the angle of the exploring electrode or the positive electrode. Now, if the lead axis was moving toward the cardiac vector, okay, or the positive electrode, this will cause a positive deflection in the ECG pattern. Okay, it will generate a positive de deflection. And if we have a lead axis that is moving away from the cardiac vector or away from the positive electrode, then this will generate a negative deflection in the ECG. إذا الـ positive deflection اللي هي موجة مرتفعة أو إلى الأعلى wave علوية أما الـ negative deflection فهي الـ wave اللي بتكون اتجاهها للأسفل Okay uh, If the lead axis was moving perpendicular بشكل عمودي to the cardiac vector Okay so it was exactly 90 degree to the cardiac vector. It will generate both positive and negative deflections with same magnitude, uh, but opposite directions. And the sum of them 
will be zero. So please keep in mind these rules so that we can understand uh, how the ECG pattern is, uh, uh, is drawn or is uh, generated for each lead. Also, what is the difference between the axis of the lead and the axis of the electrical activity of the heart? The axis of the electrical activity of the heart is actually expressed as a QRS vector, okay, the net cardiac axis, which is actually or a QRS activity. It is a net okay a net of all vectors generated uh, during the uh, depolarization and repolarization of the heart so the cardiac axis we know we all know that it is directed downward okay so it is directed downward and liftward this is the net cardiac axis in this picture and it is uh, actually fixed or uh, constant for all normal heart activities but the lead axis as we said it is an imaginary line okay that runs from the negative electrode to the positive electrode negative electrode to the positive electrode negative electrode to the to the positive electrode okay for each lead so it changes with changing the leads so it is not fixed the cardiac axis is fixed the net cardiac axis is fixed but the axis of the lead is actually changing as we change the lead or the positions of the electrode. Now, how much of the cardiac vector, okay, this cardiac axis or cardiac vector, is along with the electrical axis of the lead, this will determine the size of the deflection. So the more of the axis of the lead is parallel or, or, or along with the net cardiac axis, the larger the deflection will be. And the less, okay, and the less uh, parallel uh, uh, component of the lead, okay, that is uh, cover, covering the net cardiac axis, the less is the deflection. And we will understand that more when we look at the different leads and uh, the different uh, deflections that are generated from the different leads. So the size um, of the vector for each lead, we determine that by drawing parallel components, okay, between the cardiac vector and the lead axis okay we draw the parallel components so how much of the axis of the lead covers the net cardiac axis so for the axis of lead one it will be like this uh, for the axis of lead three it will be as much as this and for the axis of lead two, it will be the highest, okay, because it's exactly parallel to the net cardiac axis. So let's please always remember that lead axis is not the same as the vector. Lead axis is not the same as the lead vector. The lead axis is only an imaginary line that is different uh, between different leads and between different placements of the leads but the cardiac axis it is a fixed vector constant vector which is the vector of the QRS complex or the ventricular activity uh, and uh, it is the vector of net cardiac axis which is heading 
uh, to the left and to the inferior or uh, uh, to the uh, bottom okay of the heart now let's talk about the uh, standard bipolar limb bleeds and uh, what is the position or placements of their electrodes so the first one is lead one okay and it has a positive electrode okay placed on the left arm a negative electrode placed on the right arm okay um, this is lead one and uh, this is the uh, potential difference that is measuring now let's look at lead three a uh, two sorry lead two the negative electrode is placed on the right arm and the positive electrode is on the left leg okay so positive on the left leg and negative is on the right arm lead three has a positive on the left leg and a negative on the left arm okay and uh, we will see how does this look if we can actually draw this these leads as a triangle okay so this triangle has uh, uh, three sides uh, for lead one this side is positive here negative here um, for uh, lead two we have negative here on the right side of the arm and a positive inferiorly or to the uh, left leg and the lead three uh, it has positive uh, on the left leg here at this point and negative on the left arm so here is positive negative 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 and positive positive inferiorly at the left side uh, bottom side okay so let's look at the first lead which is lead number one how can we uh, measure the uh, actually the um, axis uh, of the lead and the parallel component uh, uh, that is along with the cardiac vector or cardiac axis so this is the cardiac vector and this is the axis of the lead we draw parallel lines from the axis of the lead towards the vector of the heart and as you can see the component okay uh, that is covering the vector of the heart from the lead one is actually not very long it's considered short uh, considered small or short okay but the direction of the axis of the lead is actually toward the direction of the uh, cardiac vector or the positive lead toward the positive lead or actually is going uh, with okay not away toward the uh, vector of the heart so that's why we will see a positive deflection but small one it is not a large positive deflection so that what will we see okay uh, uh, in the uh, lead one ECG so again for limb lead one the positive electrode as we stated before it is the exploring eye or the exploring electrode so we imagine having a camera here and looking at the heart to take a picture of the electrical activity so this camera will actually give us a view of the electrical activity on the lateral okay left lateral uh, uh, side of the heart so 
because the positive electrode is in the left arm a negative electrode is the on the right arm okay and this is the axis okay that runs from negative to positive okay and we know that the left arm here is the exploring electrode so lead one is looking at the left and lateral part of the heart this is very straightforward so the qrs vector or the cardiac axis vector is not exactly parallel to the axis of lead one and that's what we have seen okay when we uh, when we made or or have drawn parallel lines from the lead one axis into the cardiac axis so only a small component or one component of the uh, limb lead the limb one lead okay uh, was along with the cardiac axis okay so that the projection of qrs is going to be small okay and it is going to be a positive but less than uh, what we will see later on now let's look at the uh, limb 2 okay so here is limb 2 okay it's drawn from the right arm as we see the uh, the axis of the limb from the right arm into the left leg and here is positive on the left leg and negative on the right arm okay so it is negative and here is positive so this is uh, actually the lead axis from negative to positive and if we have drawn a parallel line between the cardiac axis and the limb 2 okay uh, axis you will see that they run in parallel so the area that is covered by these parallel lines okay it's actually big so and uh, regarding the direction of the axis we see that the axis is running okay in the same direction of the cardiac vector okay so we said that if it was toward the positive electrode or here positive electrode here or toward the uh, the same direction of the cardiac vector it will be a positive and here it's going to be positive and large deflection why because it is parallel to the cardiac vector so the uh, how much is uh, parallel from the lead axis it's actually a lot because it's exactly parallel okay now what is the uh, direction of the exploring lead of lead 2 okay or the exploring pole so again here is lead 2 and this is the negative pole and this is the positive pole and uh, we actually uh, we actually uh, agree that the positive electrode is the exploring electrode so we can put a camera here and try to have a snapshot of the heart from this angle so having a snapshot from this angle we will actually have an inferior view of the heart okay we have an inferior view of the heart so um, the axis as we said is this uh, that is from negative here negative and here positive so this is the axis and um, as we see the um, electrode is directed downward and leftward uh, and the left ankle of the leg is the exploring electrode so lead to is looking at the inferior part of the heart and uh, we have seen that lead 2 is almost parallel to the cardiac vector and that's why it gave us greater uh, vector projection on the QRS complex with higher magnitude than, than 
what we have seen only one okay so that is clear so far now let's look at the third bipolar limb lead which is lead number three okay so lead number three is between the left arm and between the left leg with a positive electrode on the left leg and the negative on the left arm okay so we know that the arrow will uh, or the axis of the lead is hitting or is going running from the negative to the positive okay and the cardiac axis is this uh, at this angle so if we have or we try to draw parallel components that is running from the uh, lead axis toward the cardiac vector or the cardiac axis or the QRS axis you will see that there is a small component again okay uh, that is along the cardiac vector so not a big component so this is a small component and the direction again is positive because it's toward the positive pole or positive electrode okay so it is going to be a positive deflection but small one so we notice that in limb 2 we have the highest amplitude of uh, the deflections but we have smaller ones in lead 1 and lead 3 so if we wanted to see what is the angle that limb lead 3 can look toward the heart we place a camera on the positive uh, lead which is the exploring lead and then try to look at the heart we will see an inferior view of the heart okay so because the positive electrode on the ankle or the left leg and the negative electrode is on the left arm okay so um, the axis of the lead is actually not parallel to the cardiac vector so um, the actually the QRS vector is not parallel to lead 3 so only a component a small component uh, can be drawn okay in parallel to the QRS vector so that we will have a positive deflection but with will be less okay than what we have seen for the limb two so um, these are actually a summary of what we have seen for lead number one lead number two and lead lead number three and the uh, vectors uh, of the lead axis and the cardiac vector and we have seen the largest um, QRS uh, deflection for the uh, lead number two uh, okay and less for lead number three and lead number two one sorry okay this is um, a more uh, clear uh, graphs or ECG graphs that represents the ECG pattern that is drawn from these different leads okay so lead number two we have largest uh, QRS complex okay so after talking about these three leads let's talk about the Eindhoven's uh, triangle which is actually an imaginary triangle drawn by the axes of these bipolar uh, leads okay and uh, this triangle is formed by the two shoulder and here the uh, pubic area the shape is actually an inverted equilateral triangle with the heart um, nearly in the center um, this is actually named after the scientist William Eindhoven who theorized uh, the existence of this uh, triangle 
and we will talk about the Eintsalven uh, law. So um, this law uh, actually is about the electrical potential. Electrical potential of the leads uh, forming this triangle. So it says that the electrical potential of any limb equals the sum of the other two. And we should actually take care of the positive and negative signs of the uh, leads. Okay, this should be actually uh, taking care, you should take care of, of, of the signs. So lead two equals lead one and lead three. So this lead, the one that we said it is the biggest, it has the biggest QRS complex, is actually equals the sum of lead one and lead three. Okay, so if lead one was one millivolt and lead three was 0.5 millivolt, then lead two will be the sum of these two, it will be 1.5 millivolt. Okay, this is the Eindhoven's law. So this is the man who uh, we want to um, have all the leads here placed, uh, the lead one, lead two, the lead three, the bipolar leads. So that means we have negative and positive poles for each lead. And we have the um, electrical potential at this point at his right corner is minus 0.2 millivolt and on his left corner is about positive 0.3 millivolt and in his inferior side or left leg is positive 1 millivolt. So what is, what is going to be actually here measured by lead 1 voltmeter is going to be the difference between the left corner, the left arm and the right corner or the right arm. So lead one is going to be, okay, the difference of potential 0.3 or positive 0.3 minus negative 0.2 millivolt. And here we should take care of the signs, okay, of the potentials, okay. So we take the difference between the left and the right. So positive 0.3 minus minus 0.2 is going to be positive 0.5 millivolt. This is the uh, needle or projection of the voltmeter will give us this reading for lead one. For lead two, or actually lead three, for lead three here, Okay, so here's the positive is positive one millivolt and the negative is positive three millivolt. Okay, so we will have the difference here is going to be one minus point three. Okay, the positive minus the negative. So it's going to be 0.7 here on the voltmeter positive 0.7 millivolt. Now for lead two, can you know lead two without even making any mathematical uh, mathematical process? Okay. Yes, we can sum these two. Okay. By the Eintauben uh, law, we can sum 0.5 and 0.7 to get lead two. But we can also get them from the numbers here. So lead two will be here, positive, which is positive one, minus negative negative two, which is going to be 1.2. Okay, so if we uh, have a sum of 0.7 and point, uh, point 0.5, it's going to be 1.2, okay? So those are two ways in order to uh, get lead to uh, voltmeter reading. Okay. So these are ECGs from lead one, lead two, lead three, 
and uh, we also can confirm our uh, the Eindhoven law uh, where we can um, measure the um, millivolts okay the length or the amplitude here uh, which is which equals 0.5 millivolt by this calibrated um, ECG paper pre-calibrated one and here it's 1.2 millivolt okay and for three it's 0.7 millivolt so um, if we actually uh, sum one and three we can get two okay so um, that is actually a true the Eindhoven law here is true in this case uh, and if there was uh, any differences when we sum these so this might reflect a problem with the placement of the electrodes okay if these two uh, don't don't give us exactly the sum okay don't equal the uh, lead to this means there is a problem with uh, placing the electrodes the bipolar limb electrodes now let's talk about the other three uh, limb leads which are called augmented unipolar limb leads so um, they are actually called unipolar um, they are not truly unipolar because they have positive lead and they have negative leads but the negative leads are called indifferent they cancel each other that's why we call them unipolar as if they were only one positive electrode so th those are actually three the first one is called augmented VR uh, and it's referred to the right arm augmented VL uh, referred to the left uh, arm and augmented VF and it's referred to the left leg or foot so for the AVR the positive electrode is actually on the right is placed on the right arm okay and that's why it's called AVR R. the letter R is for the right arm the negative electrodes are actually two or three and they are placed in the left arm and the left leg okay so the other two limbs for AVL the positive electrode is actually on the left arm and the negative electrodes which we call indifferent electrodes are on the other two limbs okay which are the right arm and left foot the AVF uh, positive electrode is placed uh, on the left foot and the negative electrodes the indifferent electrodes are placed on the other two limbs which are the uh, actually the right arm and the left arm so let's have a look at the AVR the augmented VR and V actually is uh, referred to voltage okay a for augmented and r for the right arm so we can apply the same principles we talked at the beginning of this lecture which is the axis okay of the lead runs from the negative to the positive electrode and the axis for the two negative okay here so the negative here are the uh, left arm and the left leg or foot okay and the AVR is here uh, representing the right arm so the positive electrode is on the right arm the two negatives are on the left arm and foot so if we have uh, uh, we have to draw the axis of the lead and we have two negative electrodes it's going to be in the center okay and it's about uh, in the pubic area here this is the center 
where we can draw a negative pole okay and the axis is running from the negative into the positive this is the axis of the lead okay if you want to see okay the exploring electrode positive how does it see the heart so we have to place a camera here the same principle uh, when we talked in the leads uh, the bipolar leads we place a camera okay or an eye on the positive exploring electrode and this will be looking toward the heart so it will be looking and have a lateral view of the heart okay it will be having a lateral view of the heart so the axis of the AVR is from the center and we can uh, actually assume that it is in the center of the heart okay and we consider that zero okay because as we said those two negative electrodes they cancel each other in the center so in the center we considered this a negative electrode that has a zero potential okay and it is going from the center or from the heart into the positive um, lead okay or the positive which is the right arm and the view is actually lateral if we placed a camera he here uh, on the positive electrode it's going to be a lateral view of the heart now let's look at the axis of the uh, vector okay now the axis of this vector actually and we know that the vector of the heart is going like this it is downward okay and inferior inferior and to the left sorry so it's like this so they are exactly opposite in direction so this axis okay is going away from the vector of the heart so this will generate a negative deflection okay negative deflection so we will see all the avr waves reversed and that is normal because of the way the axis okay the axis of the lead is directed um, in relation to the vector or axis of the vector of the heart it's running away so again here is the uh, augmented vr okay and um, here is the axis of the lead uh, and the blue arrow the blue arrow okay this is the axis running from the negative which is here um, the center okay between the two negative leads okay uh, so this is from negative to positive this is the axis of the AVR so if we look at the um, component that is running uh, parallel to the cardiac axis it's actually parallel to the cardiac axis but um, the point here is that it's running against the cardiac axis so um, the length of the vector okay of the AVR should be um, long but uh, it should be a negative deflection so that's why we see it very okay it's uh, the length is high but uh, negative deflection okay uh, now the AVL is actually the augmented voltage left arm okay the positive electrode here is actually on the left arm the negative electrode is a point between the right arm and the left foot and this is the center that's considered the center of the heart which has almost uh, zero potential here okay and if we have a camera on the uh, positive electrode the exploring electrode this would look at the heart okay uh, laterally 
okay, from the left side and laterally. Okay, so um, the axis of the vector, we will look at in the next uh, look at it in the next slide. This is the axis of the um, lead, okay, the avl lead, and the axis of the heart is downward, okay, and to the left. The length of the parallel component, okay, is actually uh, a very short component is parallel to the cardiac axis from this lead, okay. Uh, it's very short, but it is positive, okay. It is positive deflection, and uh, we will see that in a clear view with this um, graph or illustration, as you see here. Um, this is the uh, left arm, and those are the right arm and left leg. So the negative electrodes are placed in the right arm and left leg. The positive electrode is on the left arm. So the axis of the AVL lead is running from the center between the two negative here into the uh, left arm. Uh, so this is the axis of the lead. And this is the uh, QRS axis or vector. So as you can see here, um, these two, if we have to look at the component that is parallel to the cardiac axis, it's going to be very short. Okay, the component is very short. So that's why the deflection is going to be small, but the direction of the deflection is going to be positive because the lead of uh, the axis, lead axis, okay, the direction is toward the positive electrode, okay, so it is positive. Now the last um, unipolar uh, limb lead is the AVF, the augmented voltage foot, okay, which is the left foot. The uh, positive electrode, as you can see here, is placed on the left foot and the two negative indifferent electrodes are placed on the right and the left arms and you can see the axis here of this lead is running from the center between the two negative electrodes here the center let's consider the center of the heart and running from the center uh, which is zero which has zero potential into the uh, left leg or ankle and this is the positive and if we place a camera here on the exploring electrode the positive electrode uh, we can see or look at the heart and take an inferior view okay we'll take an inferior view of the heart now um, this lead actually if you can notice it lies between the two and three leads okay and the length of this lead vector okay uh, that is uh, the component that is parallel to the uh, cardiac axis or QRS axis is actually uh, will actually be between the length of lead of vector 2 and uh, vector 3 and we will see that in the next slide uh, clearly so the size of deflection is between two and three, uh, but it's actually the biggest between the unipolar, the biggest positive between the unipolar leads. So let's see how we can uh, measure the component, the vector of this. So um, this is the left leg and um, this is the center between the two indifferent electrodes. And this is uh, the axis of the lead from the negative toward the positive, from the center, the negative center toward the positive, which is in the left leg, or AVF. And this is the cardiac axis. Okay, so the deflection should be positive because it's, because it's running uh, to the direction of the uh, cardiac uh, axis of the heart. So it is in the same direction. 
Okay. The second, the second thing is how much, okay, uh, is the parallel component of the lead axis, okay, is along with the cardiac axis. So if we take here the parallel component, it's going to be actually in the middle between two and three. So it is uh, considerably large, okay, but it's less than the uh, two, less than the two, number two, okay. So this is the deflection and it is positive, okay. Uh, it is close to be parallel, but it's not exactly parallel. Okay, that's uh, what does it mean to be between two and three. Now, um, these are actually uh, a summary of the three unipolar limb leads, the AVR, AVL, and AVF. And how are the negative electrodes uh, connected? And how is the positive electrode is placed? And uh, how is the ECG that is taken from each lead look like? Okay, so this is a summary of what we have already talked about uh, the unipolar limb leads. So uh, this is again the ECG. Uh, from the first three limb leads, the bipolar limb leads, one, two, and three, compared to AVR, AVL, AVF. Okay, you can clearly notice that AVR is uh, negative, has negative deflection, but the others have uh, positive deflections, AVL and AVF. And AVF is between two and three, very similar to two and three. Now, the third type of leads are actually the chest leads, uh, which are uh, named from V1 to V6, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. And those actually uh, are leads that look at the electrical activity of the heart, but not from a vertical plane, from a horizontal plane. Okay, and this horizontal plane has an anterior and posterior part, okay, rather than superior and inferior as we uh, were looking uh, uh, in the other leads. So these leads are actually uh, unipolar, so similar to uh, the uh, unipolar, the other three limb unipolar leads, they have positive electrode, which is the exploring electrode, but they have indifferent negative electrodes, okay, that they uh, cancel each other potential, an electrical potential. The positive electrode is actually applied to the surface of the chest, okay, in certain or specific anatomic um, locations. And the indifferent electrode which um, has three connections, uh, it, they are applied on the right arm, left arm, and left leg. Okay, so um, we have indifferent electrodes, okay, but their potentials has zero, okay, and um, have, they have a center actually in the heart. So this center is the center of the uh, three uh, uh, connections of these indifferent electrodes. The positive electrode is the exploring electrode. We put in different positions, okay? Uh, the negative indifferent electrode always is considered uh, in the center of the heart, which again uh, equals zero in electrical potential. So this is what we get from the chest uh, unipolar leads, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. But what is the meaning of these uh, leads? Okay. Um, first of all, these leads are very sensitive to the electrical potential changes okay, in the heart. Uh, V1 and V2, okay, um, they actually uh, depict or detect 
the electrical activity of the septum of the ventricle and we will see why now uh, from looking at the positions of these leads v3 and v4 they detect the electrical activity of the anterior of the ventricle v5 and v6 uh, look at the electrical activity uh, uh, of the left lateral side of the ventricle so uh, this is actually a transverse or a horizontal section through the heart okay and this is of course the chest uh, you see here the uh, left atrium right atrium left ventricle or right ventricle and this is the this is the septum between the two ventricles and we place the um, these leads in certain uh, anatomical uh, spaces or places uh, on the chest this is where we put v1 in the horizontal plane this is where we put v2 this is v3 this is v4 and this is v5 and the v6 and the other name for these uh, leads is the uh, precordial leads okay so now we will look at the different uh, axis of the different uh, chest leads and how they relate to the ecg pattern okay so um, you will see that if the axis of the lead was moving away from the axis of the heart or the qrs axis or the cardiac axis which is in the horizontal plane please remember that in the horizontal plane the axis of the uh, cardiac uh, vector is moving to the left and anteriorly so this is the axis okay this is uh, the axis of the heart okay so any lead any chest lead that is moving away from the axis is going to give us a negative deflection okay a negative deflection so v1 for example we will have a negative deflection because it's moving away from the cardiac axis the horizontal cardiac axis but v6 as you can see here this one v6 okay it's moving close to parallel okay it's not parallel but it is close to parallel to the cardiac axis or v5 more parallel to the cardiac axis okay so we will see a positive deflection okay in the r here another rule or another uh, notice uh, another note um, as we move from v1 to v6 you will notice that the r will get larger so we started here here as a negative deflection of r and then the r here started smaller small positive and then gets bigger and bigger okay from v1 to v6 but or however the s is actually starting small and getting bigger okay getting bigger and bigger and big. okay so as long as we move from v1 through v6 the s wave is getting bigger there is a point or uh, let's a lead where we will see an equal waves of r and s and if you look at these leads ecgs you will see that in v3 we have almost equal r and s wave okay and this is what we call transitioning lead sometimes it is in v4 sometimes it is v3 okay so it depends on the person depends on the uh, position of leads so uh, this is called a transitioning lead so sometimes if there is um, some uh, differences in the um, 
orientation of the heart in the horizontal plane due to hypertrophy of uh, uh, ventricles, left ventricle or right uh, atrium or right ventricle. This will change the transitioning lead okay, into other than V3 uh, or V4. So um, again, here are the, uh, the uh, different chest leads that we put on the chest. Okay, uh, the place or the location, the anatomic location of them, V1 in the fourth intercostal place, V2 just parallel to V1, and then V3, V4, we place V4 first. Okay, in the mid-clavicular line, and then we put uh, V3 in between V2 and V4, and then uh, V6 will be in the mid-axillary axillary line, and uh, V5 is between V4 and V6, and they are all in the fifth intercostal space. So, um, if we look at these um, positive electrodes, Okay, the exploring electrodes, and look at the direction that uh, we can look from, or the angle that we can look from uh, each vector, or each, um, sorry, each um, chest lead. You will see that for V1 and V2, we can look at the septum, okay, of the ventricle. So that's why. Uh, the direction for V1 and V2 is septal. It gives us information about this place of the heart. For V3 and V4, okay, uh, this gives us an anterior view of the heart. And for V5 and V6, it gives us a lateral view of the heart. Okay, so V1 and V2 septal, V3 and V4 anterior. For the lateral, V5, V6. And we add to that what we learned earlier from the uh, limb um, leads. Uh, we can say that uh, number lead number one, AVL and AVR. And for the inferior view, AVF to and three. So from looking at the ECG, we can look at the heart from different angles. Okay, so if there is uh, something wrong in at least two leads uh, uh, that are uh, de detecting certain areas, so that there is something wrong with that area. Okay, that's how we can make use of the ECG in, uh, of course, um, having a differential diagnosis of a certain uh, disease in the heart. So again, those are the chest leads ECGs, how they look like. Okay, and these are the uh, complete list of leads that we already talked about. Okay. And this is a summary of what we have already learned in this lecture about the uh, limb leads, three bipolar, three augmented, uh, how their uh, deflections are, and then the, the six pericordial leads, okay, from V1 to V through V6 in relation to the uh, cardiac vector on the horizontal plane, okay, so this is the um, cardiac vector in the horizontal plane, and this is the cardiac vector in the vertical plane for the limb leads, and this is the vector of the heart for the chest leads. Okay, so in next lecture, we will learn about the vectorial analysis and some of the uh, important uh, abnormalities of the heart that can be detected by ECG. So thank you and good luck.